um, some really uh, great picks that we were able to put up on our uh, social media. But this kind of uh, signals the beginning of the liberation uh, season. I understand there was a little bit of a issue with whether or not these memorials would be publicized. Well, yeah, we weren't going to pub. Uh, well, of course, you know, we want everyone to know that we're commemorating liberation, right? And, and we want our our uh, Manina to know that we want to know, we want our people to know that we'll continue to celebrate or commemorate liberation because it's important for us as tomorrow. And uh, so we didn't want to publish only because you know we're kind of concerned about the social distancing issue and the capacity. Um, but you know, of course, so it is published now. <laughs> and um, but because it's published, you know, we still there is a I think there's a caveat there that says it's by invitation only. Uh, certainly, we won't um, turn anyone away. Uh, Mayor Bill did, and his and his crew did a great job yesterday at Menengen, and uh, it was a nice and simple ceremony. It wasn't as as elaborate as it was in, in previous years, but it was it was a nice commemoration, and I thought it was uh, it was um, appropriate, you know, for for our time. And so, of course, all the the island officials were there. The military was there. Uh, the governor gave her gave her remarks. She, um, I have to say, that I appreciated her remarks in acknowledging, and acknowledging the American forces, uh, because it's true. You know, I mean, when when we we think about the military now, and we think about our relationship now, uh, that's that's kind of what I want to always remember is that, and I, and I always remember that as a child and listening to my grandparents and, and the elders. You know, they're very appreciative of the Americans and and. And as we evolve and we we, um, we we learn more, perhaps, or we we find ourselves in, in difficult situations as a colonized, perhaps, nation, as some might might uh, refer to, uh, we should always remember that uh, you know our our um, Manina went through the atrocities of war, experienced those experiences, and uh, experiences those difficulties of war and uh, they were very appreciative of of the americans coming in and and saving the day and so you know that's something that i think we, we always need to remember one of the things that uh, i know i'm going off the path here but one of the things that i also know in interviewing some of our manamco survivors is that they don't have yes there there was a, there was a lot of animosity towards the japanese people at the time mm. but some of them realized that you know they really were just Told what to do by their leaders, and so they there there is a sense of peace and a sense of forgiveness uh, now towards the Japanese people, which I'm very happy uh, to, to to hear. Um, we also acknowledge the presence of the Japanese uh, Consul General at all our memorials, and they also lay a wreath on behalf of the government of Japan, and so that's also very significant for us. So uh, it was a good, it was a nice ceremony yesterday, and I and will. We'll be having more ceremonies this week. I believe the uh, oh the Asinan ceremony was right after the the Menengan yesterday, and I believe this Thursday is uh, Kalaguak in in Barigada, and um, and and there's a whole list of them throughout yeah. throughout the month or up at least until the twenty first. Where is the Asinan one? So, Asinan is so Asinan is the um, the border of Zoni and Chalampago, so right at the Pago Bay Bridge. And that's kind of a new, uh, that's a new, uh, newer memorial that the, the Menangan Foundation and and the mayors have actually been working on. Uh, interestingly enough, the uh, people so, from so Mayor, sorry, and, people who uh, are going through Pago Bay Bridge this morning, uh, if you're coming from Drotnia, you look on the right hand side, right by the pavilion. Uh, I think I don't know if it's still going to be there. You're going to see some wreaths. So th that's what those wreaths are, are there for. I got you. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, that's correct. So that's that's the Zotne side of of the Asina Memorial, and then on the left side, it's the is the Chalampago side. So that's that was the distinction between uh, this year and last year. So last year it was hosted by the Chalampago Mayor's Office, and so that that what I've learned is that the the people from PT and Asenmeina marched to Asina as opposed to going to Menengen. So I I'll, I'm taking a, a greater a role in in preparing that memorial these days, and so you know, beginning it's COVID, right? So we we didn't do too much. Uh, there's there's a lot more going on with with the people of PD actually in the war. So you'll be seeing some of that coming out 
uh, hopefully this this year, uh, going into next year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our liberation memorials have certainly begun, and uh, we look forward to uh, you know just to to commemorating them as mm -hmm. as we go along. Of course, there's the the Fena Cave, where that's typically. Uh, a large gathering. Uh, there won't be a large gathering in the at the cave this year. There, it's uh, very limited. I, it's just a handful of people going in. I believe it's just the the um, the Navy officials with the the mayor and the governor. I believe the mayor Baggett and the governor. Uh, but they're definitely commemorating, but commemorating the that whole uh, uh, the Fena massacre and all the people of Agat and Santa Rita with a mass at the uh, Native Mount Carmel Church. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, again, it's not, nothing has been reduced to anything. Mm -hmm. it, it really just is commem uh, commemorating it in a different way. Mayor, do you know if the, the FENA memorial, if the media is going to be allowed uh, to go? I don't, I don't believe there are, I don't, yes, I want to say yes. I, I think we should allow the media to go in. Uh, and, and if anyone has any issues, you know, I'm certainly always willing to help. Uh, have people go in and again it's if the people can't go in then I believe there should be some kind of mm -hmm. uh, broadcast or some kind of recording okay. for you know for our our user or for, and for posterity what what about uh did you mention Tinta and Faha on, on whether or not because on the release that came from Adeloupe it said uh, to be determined that's correct. So there will not be a visitation to Tinta and Faha. If you've uh, if you've never been, <laughs> it's it's a nice hike. Uh, well, I'm sure it's nothing for Bree, <laughs> but <laughs> it's a nice hike up to Tinta. Uh, but I don't believe we're we're doing that this year. Um, and we're having a mass though. The mayor is hosting a mass. I don't believe the at the time of the uh, publication of that scheduled the mass time was not confirmed. But I believe the date is confirmed. Okay. What else is and going that's, on? That's kind of about it. There's no parade. Uh, yeah. I know that the people are asking, still asking about a parade. We're we're not hosting a parade, and I don't believe on the governor's side she's hosting one as well. Yeah. Uh, there's definitely going to be fireworks, uh, so I know GVB is is a part of that, and uh, there's going to be at three different locations of, in the island. Yeah. So. Um, certainly fireworks on the 21st. Already plenty of fireworks. We've got the fireworks with the adoption bill. we got the <laughs> fireworks with the Dr. 112 bill. Plenty of fireworks already. Somebody said, oh, we didn't do fireworks 4th of July. Yeah, we did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true. <laughs> uh, Mayor, something we fireworks brought up. with the dogs. Right, with the dogs. the dogs. That's oh, the one gosh, I was going to bring up. Dogs. Yeah, so um, anyway, yeah. last was that last week or I forget when – you you talked about this video Tizen. There was a whole dog city over there. Um, right. is there. Has there been any action taken on that? Uh, the dogs, I believe, are still there, but we 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 have a plan, and uh, the the plan is really to relocate them uh, and to shelter them. That's mm -hmm. that's the bottom line, and uh, you know, relocate them, like to where? Relocate them, relocate them to shelter. Oh. Yeah. Like right, yeah. the gain or like gain, yeah. yeah. Gains are only shelter. Is it hard <laughs> to catch these like so in a situation like that, Mayor, when you go and you got you get your cage or whatever you do to uh rally them up, what do you do? You leave the cage open, you put food inside, or is it like come on, come here boy. Go in the kennel, kennel, <laughs> kennel. You know, the dogs are smarter than us these days. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they, don't, they don't work like that. <laughs> you know, they're not the same as uh, the ones that were around our grandma and grandpa's house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're, we're definitely, and maybe everyone should know, and, and that, uh, you know, the mayors aren't doing this on their own. Uh, we're certainly working with animal control because that's, they're the, they're the uh, you know, they oversee this operation really and, uh, and gain. And they'll be assisting us in in how we're going to properly, uh, how we're probably going to trap the dogs so that we can um, we can transfer them to to the shelter. Yeah, but does so, Gain even have space? Gain will have space. That's that's you know, bottom line. This Gain will have space for the dogs. Okay. <laughs> right on. Uh, yeah. Where are we with the abandoned vehicle uh, cleanup? Uh, the ban and vehicle world, we we were still uh, we're still collecting for sure. Uh, that's coming in. We know we're going to run out run out run out of money soon, um, but uh, we're hopeful that through the work with the 
legislature and the administration with the ARPA funds that will will get more money to to do that cleanup. So that's it's kind of a you know, it really is a big deal. We there's so much more out there. Um, one of our bigger issues is really the the purchase order limits at twenty five thousand dollars, and so we're trying. I'm hoping that we're not going to make that an issue. Uh, we'll, we'll try to, to work with us, uh, Senator St. Augustine on that to ensure that when we uh, when we're able to procure um, these the removal of these items that that mayors are not limited in the amount uh, for their POs or, or not at not at twenty five thousand because when you get twenty five thousand you have Dedido and Jigo and you know Magila and Barragad and they're just going to run out real quick so that's always been our problem and we we to follow procurement law right you we we have to there's a twenty five thousand dollar cap per vendor. And so once you reach that 25,000, you, you have to change the entire process and go to another vendor. The problem is there's only two vendors on Guam. So if you if you're capped at 50, you're, you're kind of stuck until we, we start the program again. So that's, those are the, those are the little roadblocks that we encounter that I don't believe the people deserve. And that's just the bureaucracy of things. And I, I just hope, hopeful that uh, in the coming months that will change because people don't want to hear our excuses right. uh, and they're not excuses that we've made, you know, they're just excuses within the law. And, uh, and I say it like that because they are, you know, we have to follow them. Have you guys had any more uh, discussion with Adeloup on the American rescue plan funding? Uh, not, no, not none recently. Um, no. Yeah. What about um, the COVID differential pay? Any update on, on payments? Can I tell you that I think I was dreaming about you because I don't remember. I knew I was coming off this morning and I, <laughs> that's not a joke. I was thinking when I woke up, I thought, did I have a discussion with Bri on this? Because yeah, yeah, you I, did. I, I like, <laughs> and it was only about the COVID differential. I was like, okay, here we go. I'm, I'm not prepared again <laughs> to answer a question. <laughs> Hi. And so the answer is no, no, no. <laughs> oh, man. <All> right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how about... But, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're... we're uh, um, uh, I, I, no, the answer is no. Huh. <laughs> what about um, uh, senior citizen centers? Oh, the senior... Ci I'm not sure if I updated you last week. There's so much that's gone on since mm -hmm. then. Uh, there are different... You know, there's different things going on with the different centers as far as the repair work, and, and that's all being done. So, uh, I'm just grateful that you know we're not having any hiccups with purchase orders, and that's typically what government agencies have a problem with. So, crossing our fingers, saying an extra prayer, we have not had any problems with purchase orders so far. Uh, we're we're working on the, um, you know, like I said, on the repairs of the facilities that that need the repairs, and hopefully the the uh, safety equipment comes in. So I don't know if we discussed, I, I have to remember if it's, uh, make sure that, you know, it's it's something that I can actually say about the, uh, the, the senior centers, because we're hoping what in our plan, we want to, to keep this, the seniors six feet apart, right? Uh, social distancing. But I think we're looking at making it so that they are, they are utilizing one six foot table for every two senior citizens now. And that's kind of where we're, what we're working on. Um, and I believe the governor is on board with that as well. Um, because the, hopefully by the time we, we get everyone back uh, into the centers, we, we won't be having to social distance so much. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we will be prepared for that. We'll still have the, the uh, sneeze guard, the plexiglass available. Uh, because again, you know, there, there are, Manamco, right? And we just want to be able to, if they feel comfortable with it, then we'll use it. So that's still being procured and still uh, still part of our plan. Is there a, a new uh, 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 tentative day that we're hoping to reopen them? I know the governor signed her executive order for the 1st of July. Mm, it's July 6th. October 1st, when you guys are blindsided. October 1st is still our goal for okay. the uh, yeah. senior centers. And we're, but we're hoping that we can open the adult daycare centers sooner, uh, the, those those four centers. If we can, we just feel that the, that's the the most need 
uh, not only for Manamco, but also for their caregivers, right? Mm -hmm. So if we can give them uh, some reprieve and open up our center, uh, the adult daycare sooner, then that's what we're, we're hoping. So we're, we're, we're working on that. And because, because that is so, uh, those facilities need to be, uh, there's, there's a lot of renovation that needs to be done for COVID uh, related purposes. That's actually uh, been ongoing. So uh, actually we're, I don't want to give a date, but certainly before October 1st for the adult daycare. For the, the senior centers, do you, uh, Mayor, do you kind of go around and check on your, your people who you know would normally be there just to, to show face a little bit? Because I know that's where so many of our Manomco get a lot of the social interaction. Yeah, and so uh, most mayors that have centers do check on their Manomco. And for us, uh, well, I'll use PD as an example. We deliver our senior meals. So mm -hmm. that's the interaction that we have. And so uh, just as well as the other mayors when we deliver the senior meals and once in a while I'll deliver the meals as well. So, uh, you know, we, we that's the type of interaction we have, which is good because then there's that, you know, there's just enough time to talk and then you get to go. <laughs> it's not, not a, a whole day chat. <laughs> but yeah, I think for the most part, everyone is, is, is doing okay. Uh, and that's, well, you bring up another, uh, another issue. Uh, this month, uh, senior citizens, the Division of Senior Citizens is going to definitely do an assessment of the the enrolled participants to make sure that they will be returning or they're able to return uh, to the centers. Um, some may no longer be with us, and so we'll, you know, th that's the that's another portion of this, uh, you know, this the, the preparations that we're we're handling as well. Well, that's about it. Uh, it's most of the mayors are working on their memorials if they have one uh, for this month and, you know, uh, preparing for any kind of storm, you know, uh, typhoon preparedness was month was in June, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so but we always have to be prepared. It's that time of year. Yeah. Right. All right. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, too. You guys have a good day. You, you too, too. Enjoy your coffee. I, <laughs> thanks. Adios. You got a Adios. big cup there. <laughs> <laughs> all right mayor jesse alex 753 uh let's take a break